Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Let us now talk about how exactly do we hear. Now that we're done with the structure of the external ear and the inner ear, we should talk about how the mechanism of hearing exactly works. We know that the basic function of our ear is to convert the sound waves into electrical waves or electrical signals which are taken to our brain and the sound is interpreted. So now sound is not a transverse wave, but it's a longitudinal wave composed of compressions and rarefactions. So there are two properties of these sound waves that you have to know. Number one is the frequency and the second one is the air pressure. So frequency, we know that frequency is the is basically one by time period or the number of wavelengths covered in a unit time, per unit time. So frequency determines the pitch of the sound that we hear. So ah uh, is a low pitch, sorry for my voice, and ah uh, is a higher pitch. So that is determined by the frequency. So higher the frequency, higher is the pitch. And air pressure, air pressure is basically the pressure exerted by this wave which determines the volume or the loudness of the sound and that is what our ear uh, basically interprets. So now that we know the two basic properties, let's see the whole path of sound right from the external surroundings. So suppose there is a sound outside, an ambulance sound suppose, that sound enters our ear through the pinna. Now you know our pinna is composed of these weird cavity-like structures which are pointing in different directions. These different directions help the pinna or the ear to know where the sound is coming from. So it collects sound from all the areas around us and it sends it into the auditory canal, external auditory canal which is this one. Then it hits on the tympanum or the eardrum. Now from here amplification of sound takes place. Amplification basically means increasing the intensity or loudness of the sound for the ear to be able to interpret it in a better way. So the middle ear takes care of increasing or amplifying the sound. Now I'll tell you how that happens. It's basic physics. So you know eardrum, its area is way, way, way more than the area between uh, or the area of the stapes or the smallest bone in the ear. So the sound hits the tympanum and the waves or the energy are transferred into the tympanum in the form of vibrations. Now this vibration become higher in their amplitude and that is because of these three bones. So you know the area of this or eardrum is greater than the area of stapes. And when you apply Bernoulli's theorem and all of those basic physics, you will know that since the area of this one is larger than the area of this, the air pressure over here is lesser than the air pressure here. And you know that air pressure determines the loudness or the volume of the sound. So hence the sound is amplified from the tympanum to the stapes. So now the sound is carried in the form of vibrations from outside to the tympanum to the stapes from where it enters the main organ, the cochlea, which is responsible for interpreting our sound. So it enters through this oval window, which is here, into the cochlea. So now these vibrations enter the cochlea through the oval window and cause the movement of endolymph. You know, this is the bony labyrinth and this black structure is the membranous labyrinth, which contains endolymph. When we take the cross section of cochlea, this is how it looks and this is the endolymph filled area. So there is a movement in this endolymph. Now when there is a movement in the endolymph, it causes the movement of hair cells, the hair of the hair cells. So basically, this is the organ of corti, the organ for hearing. This organ of corti is made up of hair cells which have stereocilia. Stereocilia, as I told in the previous video, are non-cellular structures which move. So when this endolymph moves, these stereocilia present on the hair cells also move. Okay, and on top of this, you can see this kind of structure over this, over the hair cells on the organ of corti. This is known as the tectorial membrane. Okay, so when these hair cells move, 
they bend across the tectorial membrane, right? So that stimulus, that bending across the tectorial membrane causes these hair cells to shoot an action potential. So the endolymph moves, which causes the stereocilia to bend across the tectorial membrane in this manner, which causes the stimulus for the hair cells to release an action potential. This action potential is carried by the cochlear nerve to the uh, hearing part of our brain. Now let's talk about the other aspects other than hearing part. So there is one more window here other than the oval window. Oval window opens into the cochlea and round window also opens into the middle ear from the cochlea. So what happens is when the vibrations push the oval window inside, then the round window comes outside in order to maintain the air pressure inside the cochlea. So that's the basic function of the round window. Now let's come to uh, the interpretation of sound. So since you know cochlea is this long, different frequencies of sound are interpreted on different areas of the cochlea or different basilar membranes or uh, different organs of cortis of uh, the cochlea respond to different frequencies of sound. So this tip of the cochlea or yeah, the tip basically responds to lower frequencies and the base responds to higher frequencies. And that is the only extra information that you have to know. So yes, we are done with the mechanism of hearing and this is how our hearing is interpreted by our brain. So thank you so much for watching. Please let me know if you have any more video suggestions. Thank you.